Hello everyone Hello. and yes and welcome back to Explosive Topics. Yes. It's been a constant issue here in Ghana. So we're talking about the lights issue. It's an ongoing issue. And you know what? We're getting into all about lights out here in Ghana right after this. So we are back with our segment of lights out in Ghana. Yes. This has been a hot topic. I'm pretty sure for most of us that are around and it's a topic that has been ongoing. It's a topic that has been unresolved and it's a topic that is probably least addressed. And for some reason, I feel like a lot of people just don't like talking about the different issues that happen in Ghana. I've had people even tell me that, oh, this is Ghana. So mm -hmm. if it's lights out, you should just deal with it because this is Ghana. And me, I feel like while we all know that this is Ghana, that we are going to have many different issues happening here mm -hmm. on not just Ghana, but in Africa as a whole on the continent, Yes, we expect different these different challenges to arise. However, when this is when you consider that this is the year 2024 and you are still living as if you were in 1965. Exactly. That is an issue. Exactly. Like am I wrong or am I right? Because I feel like Ghana has Africa period has too many natural resources for it to be this far behind and I feel like it's, it's someone has to stand up and have a voice. I think I've said this even on our last video. Someone has to stand up and have a voice because if nobody has a voice, then we will all just be voiceless, which we have been for many, many years now, centuries now. And it's time that we stand up, step out and start talking about these hard conversations. What has been your experience with this whole lights out issue? Uh, we have had, um, let me go back to 2022 um, when the lights was out for six days. Okay, imagine that. Like six I said, days straight. Six days. No no answers, nobody to call, no nothing. What? Um, where I live now, my water is connected to an electrical pump. So if the lights go out, the water goes out, mm -hmm. which has changed my shower routine. It's changed my routine. Normally mm -hmm. I'll get up, my husband will make coffee, I'll chill for a minute and eventually take my shower. Now, if I open my eye and there's lights, I immediately jump in the shower because right. at the blink of an eye, the snap of a finger, the lights out. Mm -hmm. My husband's in the shower the other day. I mean, like four days ago, soap everywhere. So luckily when the power went off and the water went off, my husband's in the shower, we have a poly tank where you can go get water. That was the only way he could get the suds off of him. Mm -hmm. but, but it's horrible. You know, like I said, I use a, a nebulizer sometimes. What happens? if the power's off and I need to plug my nebulizer in. Thank God I have never had to, but in that situation, I think people with uh, if people who use nebulizers, if you in Ghana, try to buy one that's battery powered, you right. know? Uh -huh. But it's horrible, it's, it's a bad situation. You know, the government doesn't, okay, in the US, in California anyway, if they're gonna cut our lights off, we get a notice in on August 15th, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., exactly. lights will be off yes. or your water will be off. Here, right. nothing. Our lights went off three times in one day. For the last 30 days, our lights have gone off every single day, at least twice a day. Yeah, we've at experienced the same. twice a day. We've experienced the same exact thing where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then, like I said, after the lights go off, you only get one flush of the toilet. Uh -huh. That's it. That's no it. more, nothing. Right, yeah. Uh, so we have had similar challenges in our own households because we have moments where the lights go off like the other day I would say day before yesterday the lights went off at 6 a.m. They were off all the way until 4 p.m. Mm. Now we were out and about because you know during the day it's not so bad because we're not home so it's not really a bother it's more so at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so we get home and i'm like and i'm telling the kids i'm telling my husband i'm like oh it's, it's we don't got nothing to worry about like lights been off they went off at six this morning they just came back on as we were on our way home so i was like we don't have no issues like we we don't have to worry about the lights being off tonight at least because they was off all day yeah Good. we get home eight o'clock p.m lights out. out again again and they stayed out until 2 a.m. Mm. 
So we had like a very small window to even utilize the lights, which we were not able to even do because yes. we weren't home to utilize right, anything. Right, we were, right, you know, right. out doing what we have to do to survive right. as adults. Yeah. So it's very difficult. And for me, I really think about the, the newborn babies, you know, like um, Kim mentioned, um, people who are struggling um, medically mm -hmm. and they have different medical devices that they need to utilize and they're unable to do so because of the lights out situation. Or what about the elderly people? Yes, exactly. You know, and I exactly. have, you know, an, uh, a very good elderly friend of mine. She just turned 69. Happy birthday to her. Um, but she is, she just turned 69 years old and she had an incident where she was just in Ghana, I think for a few months, she wasn't quite aware of like the lights out situation. She was staying at a friend's house. She went to go use the bathroom. Now at this time when she went to go use the bathroom, it's, it's dark outside and it's lights out. She was not familiar with the house. She tripped and fell down the steps and broke her leg. Mm. And it's a prime example of why you know, Ghana as a whole has to take this lights out thing a little bit more seriously. And I think that for the most part it's being swept under the rug because they see lights out more so for people who can afford generators, who can mm -hmm. afford power mm -hmm. plants, who can stay in the, you know, nicest of hotels, who have money, you mm -hmm. know, people mm -hmm. of prominence who don't have to worry about so much the lights out issue. But what I want to attack today is what about those people who are less fortunate? Correct. What about those elderly people who are in villages who have electricity but don't have access to get solar panels and these different things that we are able to so freely get as, yes. you know, mm -hmm. diasporans or even people, um, native people who just have the privilege of having wealth? Mm -hmm. What about those people who don't have the finances to do those things? What happens to them? I mean, they suffer pretty much. Pretty much they just suffer. Um, unfortunately, the difference in my situation is you're out and about, and I'm a I'm a homebody. I'm pretty much home all day, so when the power's out, <clears throat> I feel it. Mm -hmm. We went to sleep. Power went out about two in the morning. It stayed off to twelve in the afternoon. Wow. Elderly people, infants, babies, young children, sick people, they just suffer. And I think the biggest issue is nobody talks about it. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, in the U.S., you can go to the manager or go to the head of, you can call uh, the light company, New York County main uh -huh. office. There's people you can call here. And it's make like, complaints. what do you do? Right. Like, even if you make a complaint, is somebody going to get it? Is somebody going to read it or mm -hmm. hear it? Mm -hmm. It seems like the answer is no. no. Like, nobody really cares. Right. Like, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people look at it like, oh, this is Ghana. You should be prepared. You should have um, battery powered fans. You should have solar panels, get your own boho. You know, they have all of these mm -hmm. solutions, but guess what? At the end of all these solutions, it requires money. Okay? And you know what? That is exactly what people say to me when I'm on social media and my lights go out. Do you have solar? Do you have a flashlight? Do you have a power bank? I have all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have all of that. But mm -hmm. what, like you said, what about the people that don't, or right, can't, that afford can't afford it, it, or don't even know some of this stuff? You got some people that don't know power banks and chargeable fans exist. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. Know, it's, a, it's an issue. And my heart truly goes out for um, content creators here in Ghana who, you know, may not necessarily have the funds. They're struggling to make it as it is, trying their best to, you know, come up with the funds to create content and travel and these different things, which it is not easy. It's not easy being a content creator. It's not easy getting funds together to be able to travel to show you guys this amazing beauty that we get to see every day. It's not easy being able to come up with the finances to do these different things. That's so true. when you're already struggling to be a content creator as it is, how much more do you have to put into getting solar panels and all of these different machines that's gonna help you when the lights go off? Correct. It, it, it's difficult. Know, it is difficult. Even, you know, down to when I'm on social media, I have to make sure my data is up on my phone. I have to make sure I get you know, I buy 12 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes of data. I have to make sure that my power banks are charged. 
may mainly the power banks are charged because I know just like that mm -hmm. the power can go off. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I mean, it's just like I said, it's mm -hmm. a never-ending situation. Imagine having no power for six days. That's crazy. Six days. That's crazy. In the middle of 85 degree weather. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets comp compensated for their food. No. Nobody, nobody. I mean, Im imagine six days, whatever meat is in our freezer, it, six days is no good. Exactly. Or my husband's trying to hurry up and roast or cook all the meat. It's, it, it's, it's a bad situation. Right. You know, nobody gets compensated for that. You know, we know in the U.S. if it happens, you know, people will get compensated. Mm -hmm. I have seen that happen happened before right me too but you know mm -hmm. here it's nothing it's just like oh it's just kind of a oh well yeah no really like oh well mm -hmm. and i've all. seen you know in the u.s i've seen where the lights have gone out for not even four or five six hours and people are receiving thousands of yep. dollars for yep. their food that has gone it. bad in their yep. refrigerator sure yeah you know so at it. some point and i don't want to hear the excuse that oh well that's america and this is exactly. ghana exactly. no exactly. that's not an excuse ghana has more than enough natural resources to fully fund any economic issues that is taking place so it's yeah. not enough to say that oh this is ghana and that's america because guess what ghana has even more natural resources than america has to offer and yet they're so far advanced than we are and nobody stops to think and question what is happening here what's taking place here where's the money going where's our resources going right nobody questions nothing we just i believe that that's ghana mm -hmm. and that's america that's it and just because I want to let y'all know, we know exactly where we are. We know we're in Ghana. We know we're on the continent of Africa. We don't need to be reminded of that because we're trying to give you information and, and inform you of what's going on here and share our experience with you. So before you come telling us, uh, go back to America, we know we are on the continent of Africa. We have chosen to make this our home. We're just being informative and letting you know what we experience over here. Exactly. Before you get here. Exactly. So what would you guys prefer? Lights out or water out? Water out. It's too hot for lights to be out. Would you prefer lights out or water out? Uh, water out. Why? Because when the lights is out, it feel hot. So... Last night we experienced a light out. What did what was that? What did that feel like? Hot, hotness, annoying. Yeah, but the boys was being annoying. Emerald was being annoying. Everybody was just hot and bothered. Yeah, and it's a big challenge, especially if you're considering relocating from, you know, wherever you are in the diaspora to Ghana or any part of Africa, you have to be mindful of these different challenges that are going to take place. You know, we're not here for the purpose of trying to expose anyone. Our sole purpose is to just talk about these different topics, to become vocal about these different challenges and things that we are experiencing as, I can specifically say, an African-American. And right. you can say for African-American because yes. we both come from America. Yes. But I understand that there's people that's not here just from America. There's people coming from everywhere, mm -hmm. Europe, England, yeah. all of these different places. <laughs> and so as a people, period, no matter where you're coming from, from the face of the earth, you have to be vocal if that's the plate that's handed to you. Our main objective, our main goal is bringing these, uh, bringing these different explosive topics to the table, is being able to discuss what is happening, the critical situations that's happening in here, right here in Ghana that need to be addressed. I'm not putting the blame on anybody. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that anybody in particular is to be to blame for anything. What I'm saying is, is that something has to be done. You know, and if the local people can't do anything about it because they don't have the finances, at some point, the government has to step in. I mean, somebody has to be the blame, but who is it? Right. Exactly. Like who, That's who, so true. Somebody up there has to, to be, be the behind this. Who is it? Like, right. who do you go to? That's a good question. You know, who can fix this? That's a good question. That's a great question, actually. And I would love to hear, um, I would love to, to expand on this conversation with someone from a local, you know, office here in yes. Ghana yes. who is in parliament, who's a politician who has their hands mm -hmm. in these different um, issues that are yes. taking place. I would love to sit down and have a conversation to understand. Of because course, though, you're more than welcome to step forward, you and your people, somebody respond to us. Mm -hmm. I would love it. I would love to have a further conversation because I don't quite understand, you know, at what point do we do things differently here in Ghana? Yes. At, one point, at what point do we get on the path of 
of elevating, of change, of development, of not living like we're in 1961 and this is 2024. Yes. I mean, you know? like you said, Ghana has everything it needs mm -hmm. to survive and live and thrive. It's just somewhere along the way the government is messed up. Mm -hmm. God gave Ghana everything. Coming on this continent, just to this country, mm -hmm. God gave Ghana everything. Ghana doesn't need anything, but right. a, but probably better government, better right. management. Better management, absolutely. Better management for sure. So I know that um, a lot of people like to shift the blame. They like to say the government is to blame. They like to say that it's corruption. They like to say, you know, wherever they want to they want to put the blame on but i'm not here to put the blame on anyone in particular yes i'm here for a solution correct i'm here for understanding and i'm here to see change yes that's my only purpose and speaking out and doing a segment of explosive topics for that purpose only yeah and you know explosive topics is just explosive is the key word so explosive is the key word. We're talking about things that is gonna ruffle some feathers. That's the old person phrase. Oh, no, I, know now. <laughs> I know it. I know it. It's gonna ruffle some feathers. It's gonna push some buttons. Mm -hmm. That that's why it's called explosive topics. So, but we we really we really would like to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Some positive feedback would be nice. Mm -hmm. Or a panel discussion. I'm yes. all for oh, it. Oh yes, yes, I'm all yes, for a panel yes, discussion. Yes. I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah, because I don't hate. I'm not here to hate anyone or blame anyone, but I'm for sure here for a panel discussion if the mm -hmm. occasion should arise. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That is it for today's segment. Um, it's hot in Ghana. We sitting here sweating, y'all. We got our napkins. <laughs> okay. Um, again. Kim has joined me for explosive topics yes. on this day. Yes. Yes. You can go ahead and follow her YouTube channel, which is Pat the Passport Traveler. Mm -hmm. So go ahead on over to her channel. Make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, you Thank comment. You. Give you. her all of the love Thank that she her channel is so deserving of. I'm just so grateful that she is here with yet another second topic that we are bringing to the table. Yes. And if this is your first time here on the channel, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you're a newcomer until next episode we will see y'all soon shower the other day i mean like four days ago soap oh, everywhere oh my gosh, I wish and so oh look you look at the blessing that has a oh you bless your whole spirit <laughs> the whole spirit not part of it did, did it work mm, well i need to get this creative thing you bought this from the States? Yeah, it's gone. I ordered from I ordered from Amazon. And really? I sent it to my daughter's house, and she's mailed, mailed it to me. Uh, about a month ago. Is it on? Is it working? Yeah, okay, let me do a mic check.